Assalamualaikum listeners. Welcome back to the discussion of chapter number 13 of financial accounting. This chapter was about corporations and we were discussing the organization and the capital stock transactions of companies or corporations. We had discussed in the part one of this chapter, uh, which was my previous recording, it was about number one, we have uh, looked into major characteristics of the corporations. We have talked about what are the advantages and disadvantages of the corporations. Then the second learning objective was also covered in the previous uh, recording that was about how to account for issuance of common and the profit stock. Today, we will be covering learning objective number three, which is about the accounting for the treasury stock and also the learning objective number four, which is how to prepare the stockholders equity section. If you have not heard, listened to the previous recording, I will advise you to go to the part one of chapter number 13, because without understanding that, it will be difficult for you to understand learning objective number three and learning objective number four. Let's start our discussion with learning objective number three, which is how to account for the treasury stock. In the previous discussions, we uh, in the previous uh, topics, we have already gone through the parts of uh, the honors equity for the corporations. We said that it has two components, paid in capital and the retained earnings. If you talk about paid in capital, we have discussed two categories of paid in capital in learning objective number two. Number one is the common stock and the number two is preferred stock. And associated with them, there was one more account of honors equity that was paid in capital in excess of par account. If you issue the common or the preferred stock above their par or stated value, the excess amount is reported in paid in capital in excess of par account. Retained earnings are those earnings of the companies which they keep with them. They do not distribute it to the owners. What's the purpose behind that? Because they want to use their own resources for the future investment purposes. So since these earnings are retained in the business, they are known as retained earnings. Today, we will be discussing one more component of stockholders' equity that is known as treasury shares. Now, treasury shares or treasury stock is a contra- capital account. Why I'm saying contra capital account? Contra means opposite. So when the normal capital, even it, it is a common stock or the profit stock, when they increase, we um, credit them. But when the treasury shares increase, we debit them. So why they are increasing, why we are debiting them, what's the purpose of purchasing the treasury shares, all these things we're going to look into, uh, we will be discussing them in learning objective number three. Let's move on towards the definition of treasury shares. So treasury shares are actually companies on shares like common and the profit stock, but they are not with the shareholders. They are not with the owners. They are with the company. Company has repurchased them company has reacquired them uh, so the shareholders has given back to the company and taken back their money or their investment and the company keeps them in their treasury uh, company has not added them back uh, to uh, you know the authorized category they are still in the treasury could be reused Okay, so uh, they are not in incompetence, you can see they are not retired. They are with the treasury of the company. So uh, why do companies reacquire them? First, let me tell you how the companies reacquire the treasury shares. Um, few people, they are, let's suppose, few people, they are holding the common stocks of the company. Company have excess money and they think that they can, uh, you know, purchase back their shares because shares are a source of finance for the company. Company gets money or assets whenever they issue the shares. So if company has extra cash, they can utilize this, that cash to purchase back its own shares so that those shares can be reused again in the future. So corporations, they usually reacquire the treasury stock for different reasons. Number one reason is that 
uh, most of the companies who are having big setup for their officers or for their employees in order to compensate them or in order to give them extra benefits or in order to give them, you know, performance uh, rewards, companies sometimes give their shares to these officers and employees. So these are known as compensation plans or you can say stock compensation plans or stock bonus compensation plan. So if you will be having the treasury stock in your company, you can use it to give it to officers and to other employees. The second thing could be you want to increase uh, the market value of your shares. Now, when I gave you the, the you know introduction about market value, I told you that this value is the value of the shares, which is defined by the buying and selling forces in the stock market. So if let's suppose like normal economic, uh, you know, um, you can say no, normal economic thing that if the demand is less, but uh, it, it, if the demand of some Something is more and the supply is less the prices goes up so same is the case when the company will repurchase its shares from the owners there will be less shares in the market and it, it's repurchase is an indication for the investors that company has extra money company is doing good that's why it has savings it has extra money so everybody wants to invest in good companies so that's why more people will be willing to uh, you know invest in this company who is repurchasing its shares or who is acquiring treasury shares so because of more demand because more people are willing to purchase the shares uh, demand will go up but the supply has reduced because company has taken out its shares from the market so supply has decreased more demand less supply supply increases the prices so in this way market prices of the shares company wants to enhance or increase its stock market price they can go for the treasury shares purchases um, when the companies they acquire another company or they involve themselves in acquisition processes then in that case sometimes in order to acquire the other companies other than cash shares are also issued so company can give its own shares which are in treasury to the acquire the other companies and the fourth uh, uh, reason for uh, the treasury sh shares is that companies want to increase earning per share. Earning per share means uh, EPS. So what is earning per shares? Companies earning, which is net income, divided by how many total shares company is having. So if the company will have less shares in the market, outstanding shares, I mean, less shares in the market, then in that case, earning per share will increase because it's a, it's a ratio net income divided by um, outstanding common stock. So outstanding common stocks in the market will be less. So denominator will be less, numerator will be big, and in that case, EPS earning per share will also increase. So um, how do you record the treasury shares or what is the accounting for the treasury shares? So we use cost method for accounting of treasury shares. Now, what is cost method? Cost method means whatever cost you incur to purchase the treasury shares, that gives the price to the treasury shares. Now, I mentioned already that treasury shares are contra equity account or contra capital account. So all the equity accounts, they have normal balance of credit like common stock, preferred stock, or you can say paid in capital in excess of par, retained earnings, all of them have normal balance of credit. But when the treasury shares are generated, they have a normal balance of debit. So when the company purchases the treasury shares, it debits treasury shares for the price what it has paid to purchase them. Um, I, we wrote here again that the treasury stock is a contra stockholders equity account, so it reduces the owner's equity. Just like um, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account, it reduces the value of the equipment or any other plant asset. Same is the case, treasury share is a contra stockholders equity account. It reduces the stockholders equity. Um, because treasury shares are not with the owners, so they are not entitled for the distribution of dividends or they don't have the voting rights because no owners own them. So this is a normal balance sheet section of owners, um, so stockholders equity section for a company who does not have treasury shares right now. So if you see how to, I'll 
uh, in learning objective number four, I'll be uh, telling you that how to prepare the stockholders equity section. So, uh, but this is one part of that. So if you see over here, stockholders equity, it's in the balance sheet. Um, firstly, we report paid in capital. Uh, when I gave you the concept of authorized capital, I told you that we mentioned the authorized capital in the theoretical section of the balance sheet. So see here, common stock, dollar five par value. Uh, for example, this company has 400,000 shares authorized, means maximum this company can issue 400,000 shares. And how much actually they have issued? 100,000 shares they have issued. And all of them are in market right now. They are with the owner. So that's why shares issued and outstanding. Okay. So please pay attention on this point. 100,000 shares are issued and they are also outstanding. Company has not purchased anything back. Everything is with the owners right now and the price is 500,000. This company has retained earnings of 200,000. So total stockholders equity is 700,000. Now let's uh, move towards uh, the reporting of treasury shares. So on February 2000, February 1st, 2017, Mayat acquires 4,000 shares of its stock at dollar eight per share. So acquires means purchased. They have purchased 4,000 shares. Look here in the balance sheet part. How many shares are issued in outstanding? 100,000. Out of these 100,000, which is with the owners, company is purchasing 4,000 shares back. Okay, and what company is paying to the owners? Company is paying them dollar eight per share. So for one share, company is paying them dollar eight. So when company will purchase back four thousand shares, the so treasury stock will get debit. We use cost method. What is the cost for the company? Dollar eight per share. So let's calculate the total cost. Treasury stock gets debit. 4,000 shares are purchased at the price of $1.8. So what is the debit amount? 32,000. And company has paid the cash. 32,000 gets credit. This is on February 1st, 2017. So after this treasury stock purchase or acquisition, how the balance sheet looks like? Have a look here. Shareholders equity, paid in capital, common stock, $1.5 par value is exactly the same. How many shares were authorized? 400,000 shares authorized. Look here, this is the previous part. So till here, till authorized, common stock, dollar five par value for 400,000 shares authorized. This is exactly the same even after the trade ratio. What changes that is over here? 100,000 shares issued. And 96,000 shares outstanding means 96,000 shares are with the owners now. Why Why the difference of 4,000? Because we have reacquired it. So this is how the difference of treasury stock look like. Look here, this is without treasury stock balance sheet. 100,000 shares issued and outstanding. But since we have reacquired 4,000 shares, the so balance sheet structure will change. 100,000 shares issued, but right now outstanding shares are are 96,000. This amount, which is in front of uh, this full theoretical part, that is actually the issued capital. Later on, we will deduct the treasury stock, so we will get the balance of outstanding. Okay, so 100,000 shares were issued. Um, common stock is always mentioned with its par value, so dollar five is the par value, so that is 500,000. Retained earnings are still 200,000. Total paid in capital and retained earnings are still 700,000. What changes that is addition of treasury stock into the shareholders equity section. It's a contra um, equity account. That's why I'm deducting it. Less treasury stock. How many? 4,000 shares. We just recorded the journal entry with 32,000. So this 32,000 is going to be deducted out of our total paid in capital and retained earnings. So now total shareholders equity is 6, 668,000. So this is how treasury shares affects the balance sheet if they exist, okay? Moving on towards um, sale of the treasury stock. Sale of the treasury stock means that company do not want to keep it. Company wants to reissue it to get more finance from the public or from the journal public or from the investors. So company could sell it above cost. In our example, we have the cost of dollar eight right company can sell it above cost this could be one scenario means each share might be for dollar nine eight point eight dollar ten above cost could be any number which is above dollar eight because in our example the cost was dollar eight for each share 
Or the second scenario could be company can sell the treasury shares below the cost, means less than the dollar eight value. Uh, what will happen when the company will issue the treasury stock? The treasury shares will decrease because they will be reissued to the market, right? And at the same time, company will get the cash. Cash will get debit. If the company sells the treasury shares above the cost, we will have uh, account for treasury shares. Uh, and for below cost, paid in capital treasury shares account will reduce if we have any balance over there. So if you look into these transactions, none of the account is affecting our income statement. Either cash is increasing, which is an asset, so your total assets will increase, or shareholders equity is increasing because more common stocks are coming to the market. So in that way, treasury stock amount is decreasing, so equity is increasing. So treasury stock transactions, they don't affect the income statement account. And because of this nature, we call them capital stock transactions. So treasury stock transactions are classified as capital stock transaction because in case of issuance, income statement is not effective because of anything. So let's take our first example in which we are selling the treasury shares above the cost. The same example is going uh, again. Uh, remember that we have purchased, we have acquired 4,000 shares at a cost of dollar eight each. Okay, that was February 1st. Now on July 1st, Miyad sells for dollar 10 per share, 1,000 shares of its treasury stock previously acquired at dollar eight per share. So can you see dollar eight was the cost and the Selling price for them is dollar ten, so it's above cost. How many shares? Out of four thousand shares, one thousand shares are being sold. So let's make the journal entry. Company gets the cash. How much cash? One thousand shares are sold, and what is the selling price? Dollar ten each. So the one thousand multiplied by ten, that is ten thousand. Treasury shares will reduce. How many? One thousand treasury shares will decrease, but Remember, treasury shares were regarded at cost. The cost is treated like a par value for them. Okay, so treasury stock is going to be decreased with par. That's dollar eight. One thousand multiplied by eight. That is eight thousand. So where the difference will go? My credit side is smaller. So I will have one account which is known as paid in capital from treasury stock. Just like paid in capital uh, for common stock in the preferred stock, we also have for the treasury stock. So now my journal entry is balanced. Because of this sale, I have got one new capital account uh, that is known as paid in capital from treasury stock and it has a balance of 2000. Okay. Um, we don't uh, write uh, gain on realization. No, that's not for uh, the treasury shares. Gain on realization is at the time of liquidation for the sale of shares, not for the treasury shares. For the treasury shares, we use this account paid in capital from treasury stock. Let's proceed in the same example by selling uh, the treasury shares below the cost. So on October 1st, Miyat sells an additional 800 shares. So out of 4,000 shares, 1,000 shares were already sold in the previous transaction. Now further 800 shares are being sold. And the price is dollar seven per share. What was the purchase price? That was dollar eight. So this is below uh, the cost cost, but we are selling it at dollar seven. Uh, let's make the journal eight. Uh, so when I prepare the journal entry, we get the cash. Cash is a bit. How come? How much? 800 shares. Each share is for dollar seven. So 800 multiplied by seven, that is 5,600. And my treasury stocks will get credit. First, look into the credit side. Um, how much treasury stock? 800 treasury shares. The cost for each treasury share, the par value like cost for each treasury share was eight. So eight into 800, that is 6,400. Um, I have, uh, n you know, less on the debit side. Debit side is cash, which is 5,600, but on credit side, I have treasury shares. So I can debit my paid in capital from treasury stock, this account, which previously I have created, if I have balance in this account. I have balance in this account of 2,000. So I can debit this account with the Difference. The difference between the cash and the treasury stock is 800. So my paid in capital from treasury stock will reduce with 800. Remember, you can debit the paid in capital from treasury stock account only if it has balance, means it has a credit balance. If it does not have a balance, you cannot debit it. 
okay so you can use it only up to the amount which is available in this account after doing this sale let's check the updated balances of the treasury stock and also uh, the paid in capital from treasury stocks if you look into the treasury stock on february 1st i'm discussing the t account of the treasury stock on february 1st we have purchased or acquired the treasury stock for $32,000 on july 1st we issue them or we uh, sell them uh, for dollar 8000 so they get credit and on october 1st we sell them for 6400 so they get credit now i have balance of only 17,600 in treasury stock account. Let's move towards the paid in capital from treasury stock. On July 1st, which is my previous transaction, I credited paid in capital treasury stock for 2000, but on October 1st, I have debited it with 800. So now I have a credit balance of 1200. Let's uh, move towards one more um, step that on December 1st, assume that Mayat Incorporation sells its remaining 2200 shares at $7 per share make the entry so now again we will get cash cash will get debit with 15400 how come 2200 shares the price is dollar 7 so when i multiply that is 15400 my treasury shares will decrease so i will credit them but again remember that will be with cost so i'm crediting look at the credit side first that is 17,600. So uh, how come I get it? 2,200 shares multiplied by cost, which was eight. So that is 17,600. Debit side has only cash, which is 15,400. Credit side has only treasury shares. So there is a difference. I can debit paid in capital from treasury stock, but not for the complete difference. The complete difference between debit and credit side is 2,200. But I do not have 2,200 in paid in capital from treasury stock. Look here at the T account. I have only 1,200. Okay, I will debit my treasury share uh, paid in capital from treasury shares with 1,200. The difference which I cannot cover, I will debit my retained earnings. So this point is very really important that you can debit the paid in capital from treasury stock only if you have balance in this account. If you don't have, don't touch it. Go to the retained earnings and debit that. So this is about the discussion of the treasury stock. Uh, this is do it exercise it's solved. I hope you people will do it. If you don't understand, please write in the comment section and I'll be answering your comments. Let's move towards learning objective number four, which is about you have to prepare stockholders equity section. It's very important for the corporations because we want to know the updated balances in the stockholder equity. So companies, they report paid in capital and retained earning in the stockholder equity section of the balance sheet. Uh, what is paid in capital? Many times I showed you in the diagram that the paid in capital includes the capital stock. Capital stock is either profit and the common stock and paid in capital also have additional paid in capital. Uh, so additional paid in capital means uh, paid in capital in excess of par common stock, paid in capital in excess of par preferred stock, paid in capital from treasury stock. So these accounts are there. Um, retained earnings are the part of the equity. This is a uh, Konali Incorporation balance sheet. It's partial balance sheet because I'm not showing you the liabilities and the asset side. We are only focusing on the stockholders equity section of the balance sheet. Um, if you see here, we firstly mentioned paid in capital. In paid in capital, the first part of the paid in capital, that is capital stock. In capital stock, if you have preferred stock, mention that first because preferred stock has preference over the common stock. So mention the preferred stock. If you don't have preferred stock, then mention the common stock first, okay? In this example, I have preferred stock, 9% preferred stock. 9% preferred stock means that these preferred stock charges a dividend of 9% on the income. Uh, so I will treat it in the upcoming uh, you know videos that how do we calculate the preferred stock so how many shares are there and based on that you calculate the nine percent dollar hundred par value the par value of the preferred stock is dollar hundred each uh, ten thousand shares authorized means this company can maximum issue ten thousand preferred stock how many they actually issued six thousand shares issued and outstanding same is outstanding so six thousand 
multiplied by 100 because preferred stock and common stock, they are always mentioned with, you know, par value or the stated value. Excess goes to additional paid in capital. Okay, so here it's 600,000. Then the common stock, this company has common stock with no par, but it has a stated value. So common stock, no par, dollar five stated value. 500,000 shares authorized, 400,000 shares issued, but outstanding is different. 390,000 shares are outstanding. So it means from here you will judge, okay, this company has treasury shares. But if you remember, I told you that this amount in the common stock part is actually the issued. If we have treasury shares, we deduct it at the end, okay? So issued shares are 400,000, par stated value is dollar five, so two million is the amount I'll mention here. So what is the total capital stock? That is 2 million and 600,000. Moving on towards the second component of paid in capital, that is additional paid in capital. So in excess of par profit stock, these are hypothetical figures because we don't have, you know, the journal entries with us, but assume that for profit stock, it's 30,000, for common stock, it's 860,000, and for treasury stock, it's 140,000. So what is my total additional paid in capital? That is 1 million and 30,000. So I have now total capital stock, which is 2 million and 600,000, and I have also total additional paid in capital that is 1 million and 30,000 so together what is my paid in capital paid in capital is 3 million 630,000 let's mention our retained earning our retained earnings let's suppose if they are 1 million and 58,000 so what will be my total paid in capital and retained earning that will be 4 million 688,000 now, when I was discussing common stock, I told you this company has uh, treasury shares. How do I know? Because issued stock is different than the outstanding stock. So how much? Let's take a difference that is 10,000. So this company has treasury stock of 10,000. Treasury stock is recorded as at cost. It's a contra equity account. That's why we deduct it. So when we deduct it, let's suppose its complete cost was 80,000. So total stockholders equity becomes 4,608,000. So this is how we prepare the stockholders equity section in the balance sheet. It's not a separate statement. It's inside the balance sheet. But yes, we need to know that how to prepare it. Let's take one uh, do it exercise. It's do it, but I want to do it with you because uh, let's see that how we can report these things. So Jennifer Corporation has issued 300,000 shares. A dollar three par value common stock. So this is the information of common stock. How many shares they have issued? Three hundred thousand, and the par value is dollar three. It authorized six hundred thousand shares. So it means total authorized capital for Jennifer Corporation is six hundred thousand. Out of that, three hundred thousand is issued. The paid in capital in excess of par on common stock is three hundred and eighty thousand. So this is additional paid in capital. The corporation has reacquired 15,000 shares at a cost of $50,000 and is currently holding those shares, means uh, these treasury shares are in the treasury of the company. So how many treasury shares? 15,000. From this information, I will know that this company has issued shares different than the outstanding shares. Why? Because we have 15,000 of treasury shares. So outstanding shares will be 15,000 less than the issued share. How many issued shares? 300,000. So if you deduct 15,000 out of it, that will be 285,000. That, that is the outstanding shares for this company. Okay. And the cost of treasury they have given us, sorry, the cost of treasury they have given us, that is 50,000. Treasury stock was reissued in prior years for 72,000 more than its cost. So here they are telling us this, that we have a paid in capital in excess account as well. Let's move towards uh, the further details. The corporation also has 4,000 shares issued and outstanding of 8% dollar 100 par value preferred stock. So here we have the preferred stock information. If you remember, I told you, if you have preferred stock, please mention it first in the honors equity section. Later on, you will mention the common stock. So we have preferred stock. Uh, how many issued and outstanding? 4,000 shares, but its authorized um, preferred stock is 10,000. The building capital in excess of par of the preferred stock is 25,000. So this is also there and retained earnings are, are also mentioned. So let's prepare the stockholders equity section. So these are the main, when, when you are preparing it, always put this 
sketch first okay when once you are done with this sketch then keep filling it so firstly we have stockholders equity then we will have paid in capital and in paid in capital we will have capital stock and additional paid in capital in capital stock we will have common stock and preferred stock in additional paid in capital we will have uh, paid in capital in excess of part common stock and preferred stock and treasury stock and then we will make a total and after that we will add the retained earnings and then we will deduct the treasury shares out of it so let's start from the first explanation that is preferred stock this details are given 8% preferred stock comma write the par value dollar 100 par value write the authorized shares 10000 shares authorized write the issued and outstanding shares 4000 issued and outstanding this is the order you have to follow always mention the rate first followed by name then the par value then how much authorized then how much issued and outstanding so amount is 400000 as i already told you that the uh, preferred stock and common stock are always mentioned with par or stated value so 4000 shares issued par value is 100 so that is 400000 followed by common stock common stock because common stock does not have a rate so i didn't write it okay so common stock dollar three bar value how much was authorized 600000 shares authorized how much was issued 300000 shares they did not tell me how much outstanding but they told me the figure of treasury shares so because of that i was able to calculate the outstanding shares treasury shares are 15000 so 300000 if it is issued minus 15000 remaining is outstanding so that is 285000 here we always mention the issued capital okay so issued is 300000 the par value is 3 so 900000 so what is my total capital stock by adding common and proper stock, I got 1,300,000. Let's move towards the paid in capital. So I have paid in capital in excess of par preferred stock, 25,000. It's clearly mentioned in the question. I also have for common stock, it's clearly mentioned in the question. And for the, from the treasury shares, it's also clearly mentioned in the previous issues. Let me just quickly show you so that you're not confused. Look here in the second paragraph ending line. Um, no, first paragraph ending line. Treasury stock was reissued in prior years for dollar seventy two thousand more than its cost. So what is more than the cost? That is paid in capital from treasury shares. So that is seventy two thousand. So I mentioned all of them by adding them. I got total additional paid in capital that is 477,000. So when I add total capital stock and total additional paid in capital, I get my total paid in capital. So that is 1,777,000. Let's add our retained earnings. So retained earnings are already clearly given in the previous uh, description that is 610,000. So by adding the retained earnings, the total paid in capital and retained earnings becomes two million three hundred and eighty seven thousand we have treasury shares that's a contra equity account so let's deduct treasury shares let treasury shares fifteen thousand common share um at cost we always record them and the cost is also given in in the description that is fifty thousand so when i deduct this from the paid in capital and retained earning i get the final answer of my stockholder equity section so listeners, this is the end of discussion for chapter number 13. Um, in order to get the notifications for the upcoming videos, please like and subscribe the channel and you will get a notification once I will upload the videos. Uh, my next video will be about the exercises relevant to chapter number 10, 11, 12 and 13 and followed by the other chapters of financial accounting introduction to financial accounting see you in the next video take care everyone if you have any problems any questions you can write in the comment section and, and i will be handling them take care bye